To understand AI agents, let's first look at how they differ from traditional software. Traditional software is built using programming languages and follows a fixed set of instructions. It takes an input, processes it in the same way every time, and produces a predictable output. It can interact with external systems like databases, file systems, or APIs, but always in a deterministic, predefined way. Compare that to generative AI applications powered by large language models like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, or DeepSeek. These are advanced systems that take input in natural language or even in other data types like voice, images, or structured data. They pass that input through a neural network and generate a response. And like traditional programs, they don't always act the same way. They're not deterministic. These one-shot interactions are incredibly useful, but they come with major limitations. Their knowledge is frozen at the time they were trained, and they can't interact with their environment the way traditional software does. That's where AI agents come in. By giving LLMs access to external systems and data, agents unlock a much wide range of real-world applications. In simple terms, an AI agent is a digital system that operates autonomously within an environment. It usually performs three core functions. Perceive the environment by accessing data, sensors, or inputs. Decide using an internal reasoning engine to plan actions toward a goal. Act by using tools to perform tasks in the real world. This is called the Perceive Decide Act loop. Think of a smart robot vacuum. It perceives the world using sensors. It decides how to navigate a room and it acts by moving and vacuuming. The idea of agent isn't new. In fact, it was a major research topic in the 90s and early 2000s. But back then, we didn't have reasoning models that were smart enough to handle complex problems. LLMs changed that. They unlock new levels of reasoning, planning, and context understanding. So how do modern agents work? At its core, an AI agent allows generative AI models to interact with external tools. This interaction is achieved by an orchestration or engine component that manages the agent's instructions and goals, tools calling, and optionally gives it access to short and long-term memory. These tools allow the agent to interact with their environment. For example, they can read and write data from files or databases, search the web or interact with online forms, call APIs, access code bases to generate or update software, communicate with physical devices like camera, smart sensor, other hardware. Now, when should we use agents? Agents are ideal when we need autonomy, complex reasoning, tool use, and adaptability. Think of these processes, for example. Customer support, sales funnels, employees hiring, etc. These are examples of complex use cases that can't be fully automated by classical approaches. They require a level of smart that are better suited for AI agents. In the industry, frameworks like Langchain and LangGraph, Autogen, Crew AI, and Pydentic AI make it easier to build agents. This is very exciting, but it's not without challenges. LLMs are powerful but unpredictable. They can hallucinate facts or misuse tools in ways that cause system failures. LLMs are computationally expensive, and multi-step planning increases both runtime and cost. If an agent takes 20 steps to solve a problem, that cost adds up very quickly. Given agents access to real systems, databases, devices, user accounts, introduces serious risks. What if an agent deletes critical data or leaks private information? Ultimately, agents will become seamless assistants embedded in apps, workflows, and physical devices. 
We just need to make sure they don't cause harm along the way.